Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a really simple typing game in JavaScript. So we're not using React, no Vue, no anything else, just JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So this is the game, let me show you. If I click on Start Game, it's going to give you a random chunk of text and the user, when they actually start typing, a timer is gonna start and it's gonna keep track of how long it took them to type this text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. So I'll say the rocker is a 2008 American comedy. I can't even type right now. There we go. So after you're done with the game, it tells you your words per minute. You could probably do this. You could probably round this to an int. Uh, let me just do that for you all. Sorry, I'm already getting into the coding. I haven't explained what I'm building. So let's try this one more time. The rocker is a 2008 American comedy. Awesome, much better. So it tells you the words per minute and then you can click start game and you can start all over again if you wanted to. And it's, there's only two paragraphs here but you can add as many as you want and you can make this, uh, you can obviously make these as long as you like as well. So just to kind of show, here you go. So that is what we're gonna be building. And if you're interested in watching this, be sure to stick around and uh, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive into it. So on the left here, I have a blank folder called JS Typing Game. And I wanna go ahead and make an index file. And inside of that index file, we can go ahead and inside of the body, let's just import uh, some script source. So I'm gonna import index.js and then I'll create an index.js file. So this is gonna be the file that's gonna hold our, all of our JavaScript code. And then we probably want some styles. So let's do a style CSS. And this is pretty much the, the bare bones that you wanna use. I mean, you could do all this inside your index file if you want, but it's probably be better. <clears throat> let's see if I can remember how to do this. It's called link CSS. And then I think it's called styles. All right, so we got those three files created, but now what I wanna do is I wanna host this index file so we can actually access it over here on the right. So what I like to do is there's a plugin or a, a tool called HTTP server. So if you type MPX HTTP server, it'll host a server at whatever directory you're at. Okay, so we have our, um, page loaded and we have our code hosted so we're trying to build a typing game so what is a typing game is basically it shows you some text and you're supposed to type it in and then after you type in your entire paragraph it tells you how many words per minute you uh, characters per minute and words per minute that you did so that is what we're going to try to do here uh, it's early in the morning so I need to drink my coffee to wake up a little bit. But okay, so we have inside of our body, let's just go ahead and create a, I don't know, a text area for right now, or not even a text area. Let's just create like a, a div that has an ID of uh, typing. It doesn't really matter what you put. So inside of this typing div, that's where we're gonna put our paragraph text. So when the page loads, we wanna take some paragraph text and insert it into this typing ID. So that means we need some dynamic stuff to happen. So let's go to our JavaScript. And inside of this, we could say, um, first of all, let's get that typing area. So const typing div is equal to document.query selector typing. In fact, I could probably say get element by ID when you do that, you don't do the, uh, the hash symbol. So let's try doing that and let's just console log it out. So I don't have, okay, let's just um, let's load up. Whoa, what's this? No, I don't know why that Radeon thing popped up. All right, so if you go to our console and refresh this, prints out typing. So this code is working. It's always good to verify our code works before you get too down into the, the rabbit hole. So we got the typing div and what we wanna do is let's say we have a, a 
a chunk of text, okay? So let's just find some text. So paragraph Wikipedia. Just grab some text from Wikipedia, how about that? Uh, let's just grab this. So when this application loads, we wanna pretty much take that text and we wanna insert it into that typing div. So typing div.text is equal to text. At least I think that's how you do it. No? Maybe it's called inner text. There we go, inner text. So we got all this text here. And what we want to do <clears throat> is going to be, I, I don't know what the best way to do is, but what I have done, or what I think you could do, is for every character, you could wrap it in a span that has a class of like word. And then as you go through your words, as you're trying to type out this paragraph, you move your cursor over the words and change the colors. So let's try doing that. So instead of inner text, we're probably going to want to do some inner HTML. So over here, let's take the text and let's split it up into different characters and then wrap each character in a span. So I'm going to say characters is equal to text of split. Split it on the empty string. So that'll give us all the characters that we want. So like T-H-E, whatever. And then we can map it. So I'm going to say map um, character. And we want to return. Um, <clears throat> what do we want to return? <laughs> We probably want to return like document dot create element, pass it a span, and let's do curly braces here because we're going to have to do a little bit more. So do some curly braces. So create the span, and then we want to say span dot enter text is equal to car, and then we want to say typing div dot append child so basically we need to put that span that we just dynamically created into the page and let's not let's not do this uh inner text thing anymore so let's try that out and see what happens so let's run this and now if i inspect these little things you'll notice that you get a bunch of characters with spans the the, the paragraph looks exactly the same as it did but now we have the ability to add classes to each individual character as we're typing. So let's just go ahead and do this. We could say um, we want to highlight the first character with something. Okay, so let's grab the first character. So we can get const first character is equal to characters dot. You know, I should probably, in, when you're doing a map, you got to return something typically. So I'm going to say return span. And then first character would be characters of index zero, right? That's how you get the first of an array. So hopefully that works. And what I'm trying to do here is I want to just basically attach a class to the first character and say first character dot um, class list dot add, I think it is. And we could add in, um, I'll say cursor, meaning that that's where you like your cursor is over. All right, so let's refresh this and see if that worked. So, okay, we are in the T, which is the first character, and we added a class cursor. So now let's go to our styles, and let's try to um, style that. So cursor could have a background color of aqua. How about that? I think that's how you do it. Okay, so now we're actually um, highlighting the character that we're currently at that we need to type. So... <clears throat> So now what we need to do is we need to basically keep track of when someone is typing. So we can use an event listener here. So we can say document.add event listener. And I think it could be called, is it key down or key press? I guess we'll find out. I don't, I don't remember what it is, but we will find out which one it is. And I think E should have a key. So technically I could just do um, this and print out what the key is. So let's just go here and refresh. And as we type, notice that we get different characters. Okay, so we, basically what we wanna do is whenever someone types in a character, we wanna check if the character they typed matches the character that we're at. So we could say if 
key is equal to um, first character dot enter text then we typed the correct key okay so if you type the correct key what you want to do is you basically want to change this uh, background color to something else maybe you changed the um, the character color to gray notice like denoting that you typed it so we could try that we can say first character dot um, class list dot remove so we don't want to have the cursor on that one anymore but we do want to add a new one called uh, call it done I don't know and then we want to basically step so we want to grab the next index here so notice here we're hard coding at zero so let's just go ahead and say current let's name it cursor index and don't confuse cursor with like my mouse this is just like uh, I don't know it seemed like a good name so so instead of doing hard coding zero I'm gonna say cursor index and then whenever you want to increment you could just say first character is equal to characters of current cursor index plus plus so that'll increment the cursor index I think I need to do plus plus cursor index so increment it first so it'll become one and then grab the character and then we want to add these classes again so let's just add this and let's rename first character to something that's more uh, appropriate so now it's kind of like a cursor character okay so that's denoting the blue highlighted character all right so let's try this we might have a bug I don't know so if I type in capital T the old cursor character thing went away and then it's saying assignment to constant variable okay so this is because I did const here I need to make those lets let's try it again so I type in capital T and it moved awesome so we need to make sure that we keep track of which ones we already typed. So I could say color gray and then refresh the page. So the, so that's working. It's a little, I think I need to make it more faint. Let's try this. Did I just type in the exact same color? I probably did. All right, so T, H, E. All right, oldest classical Greek in Latin, oh, what's going on here? Latin writing had little or no space between words. So you get the you get the gist now. I think that is like the start of a typing game. Uh, this text is a little long and it's kind of big. So what I want to do is I'm going to style the typing div a little bit. So I'm going to say typing. I'm going to say margin zero auto just so that I can center it. I'm going to give it a width of 400 pixels. No, that's too big. Oh, I call it typing with an ID. So let me, let me rename that. All right, so this looks a little bit better, I think. And I have too much text. I don't want to have to keep typing in all this text. So let's just delete some of this. And where do we want to stop? Let's stop at... Uh, I'll stop it after this. Hold on. All right. So now we got a little paragraph that we can practice typing to. And I'm console logging this, which is kind of confusing. So let's get rid of that. Okay. So now what you want to do is the moment you do your first character, times it, the moment you do your first character, you want to start a timer or something. Okay. So I'm going to just go up here and I can set a timer. So set let timer is equal to null and then the first time you do your key down you could say uh, timer is equal to I guess I could do set interval no I could do new date okay let me let me rename this I'm gonna say start time this would make more sense when you type in a key the start time is set to new date all right and I only want to start it if start time has not been defined. So I will say start time is equal to that. And then we also probably want to stop this once you get to the last character. So I'm going to say if cursor 
index is greater than or equal to characters dot length. Then end time is equal to new date. We don't have end time, so let's just go ahead and make one. And then we probably want to break out of, uh, we probably want to stop listing the key down events. Uh, we can worry about that later. But basically, when you get end time and start time, you probably want to display um, the words per minute, characters per minute, and that's it. Display. All right, so let's make a new, a new section above all this called stats. So stats. Right now, it's going to have nothing in it. But the moment that you do a, you type in your last character. You can then figure out how long it took you to type all this. And I think I need to look this up. Like, I think it's just like to say delta is in time dot now minus start time dot now or something. And that'll give you like how many have passed in milliseconds. I have to look this up. JavaScript date difference. It's just you subtract them. Okay, that's it. So you don't need to do that now, I don't think. But we will find out. <clears throat> so we want to figure out the the minutes, I guess you could say. Or seconds. I don't know. We'll f um, so I think this is in milliseconds. So if you want to give it in uh, seconds, you'd have to do delta divided by 1,000. And then if you want minutes, you could do minutes is equal to seconds divided by 60. But honestly, that's not going to take you more than a minute to type. So I don't think that makes sense to do minutes. So what we could do now is we want to calculate the words per minute. So how many words are in this? Well, let's figure that out by doing a split. So I'm going to say const number of words is equal to, uh, if we take our text up here, so text and we split it on the empty string that should give us closely how many words are in it. So split it and do a dot length. That's how many words we have. And then what we could do is um, I guess you do have to have minutes. I don't I don't really know. Let's see. So we got the seconds number of words. I think you just do like you know, let's just do minutes. You know, let's do words per second. Const words per second is equal to number of words divided by seconds. And then we could do const words per minute is equal to words per second times 60. I really don't know if this will work, but anyway, let's just display this. So document dot get element by ID. Oops, by ID, and we want to get the ID of stats, and we want to say enter text is equal to words per minute is equal to words per minute. Let's just see if this works, and for now, let's just reduce this text so we don't have to type all of this stuff in. So let's just do three words and figure this out. So the oldest classical. All right, so we got to the end of the thing, but it crashed. And I don't know why it crashed. Let's click into here and figure out where it class. So it, it tried to add a cursor to this, which we can't do because it does, we went out of bounds. So basically, I either need to move this up here or add the cursor uh, yeah I don't know I'll just move this up here I guess uh, it doesn't matter okay sorry I'm gonna put it here and I'm just gonna return here we should probably remove the event listener too so I'm gonna say const uh, key listener is equal to that and I think you could say document dot remove event listener and I think you can pass it the key listener I'd have to google up the docs for this I don't remember how to do this uh, type so you'd have to pass it the listener in key down I think yep 
cool. So hopefully that works. Let's try it again. The oldest classical. All right, so my worst per minute was 92 according to this math that I don't know is right. So let's just try to create it. Um, let's do the same thing with a little bit more text. And let us start now. heck word is that alternating directions it seems accurate I mean I'm not the fastest typer but that seems like my typing speed 80 words per minute so I think I mean at this point we probably could add a little bit more we could make this fancier and stuff we could add a button to restart and that could grab us some random um, text uh, let's try that let's try that so I'm going to take this one step further and then I'm going to call it a day because I think we pretty much have the typing game. So let's just do like a rocket Wikipedia. Whatever, let's just do this, the rocker. Is that the guy from the office? <laughs> it is. I don't think I've seen this movie before. Interesting. All right, let us just grab all this. How about that? And instead of just saying text here, we can say const uh, paragraphs, which is going to be an array, which will have this one. And then we can also have this one. So we've got two paragraphs now. And basically, when the game starts, we want to grab a random one and do all this logic again. So this is where a function comes into play. We want to repeat basically everything we did when someone clicks like a restart button. So I'm gonna do a start const, or a const start game, which is a function, which is literally gonna do all of this. So let's do this, go to the top, and we are going to, you know, we probably wanna clear typing div. So typing div dot inner HTML is equal to empty and probably the stats div. So let's do a stats div here, get element by stats, and we just say stats div. So clear both of those and we can actually start appending things to them. And you guys are probably annoyed with how ugly the styling is, so. Let's just do the same thing. Let's just make these match so that it looks a little bit better anyway. All right, so I think this should work other than, this was referring to text. So I need to say text is equal to, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a random paragraph from this paragraphs array, okay? So to do that, we can say paragraphs, and then grab me the index of pars int math.random times paragraphs.length. Okay, that is how you grab a random thing from an array. You basically times the length times a random number and then you parse it and then you're good to go and i'm missing parentheses so let's add that all right so all this should work i hope end date oh okay that's a that's so i should have called it end time but it doesn't matter because we're just doing this end time start time Okay, uh, yeah, so what would be good is let's add a, let's refresh and see what happens. So we have an empty page and that is because we need to actually call start game. So let's add a button, which on click can call start game. And I think I should put start game here, let's see. So we have a function called start game and that is going to hopefully run. So I click it, doesn't do anything. And I think that's because, I don't remember how the, I think you just have to do like this, call it like it's a function. So start game, okay, I clicked it and that printed out over here. And that's too much text. So I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of some stuff so that we can test this.
All right, let's try again. So as you can tell, if I keep starting the game, it's randomly grabbing one. And then, in fact, I can keep clicking this and it's just gonna restart it. So we probably wanna hide start game until you finish. So let us do start game button. And that is gonna have a ID of start game. So when we first load, when we first start the game, we probably want to say um, we could probably hide it, I guess. So add class list dot add hidden. Okay, so let's add a class called hidden, which has display of none. So the moment I click start game, the button doesn't go away. Let's see what's going on here. Get element by ID, start game. We have a button with an ID of start game. And then we add a class list hidden to it. And hidden should say display none. So something is not working as we think it should. Let's look at this button and figure out what's going on. So the button doesn't have a class. Did I call it class name? It has an ID. Okay, it doesn't have an ID here for some reason. <laughs> Okay, I don't have my glasses on, but it's because I added the ID to the script tag instead of the button. So, oops. So if I click it, the button goes away. And honestly, when the game ends, we just want to add it back. So remember, our game ends here. And we could just remove um, that class hidden. I might, it might make more sense to put this in a function called like in game, but I could just put a comment called like game ended, just so it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. Um, anyway, let's try this. So start game, I want this to be centered. So margin zero auto is my little, oh wait, that doesn't work. Well, I could do a text align, that'll work. So let us do a text align on that. I think I could just say body text align is center. I don't know how much this is gonna screw up our game though. Wait, I wanna make sure I just cause I didn't, yeah. I gotta text align it. All right, let's try this. The oldest classical Greek and Latin. So we got our worst per minute, 93. And then this is what we typed and we can click start game and do it all over again. I'm getting a ton of errors in the console. So let's figure out what's going on. Um, cursor character inner text. So that is undefined. Typically you put the body at the top, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so this is failing and cannot read property of inner text. So it's failing somewhere. I clicked that, I forgot what it was. Key equal to line 35. So I guess cursor character, when you finish the game, you know, actually I'm not sure what's going on here. Can I read property inner text of undefined? So why would cursor character be undefined? I feel like it's doing, we still have event listeners running. Cause if you notice we printed this error out twice when I finished the game, I bet you it's gonna print it out three times now if I start another game. So let's clear that and type D. Yeah, it's, so there's an event listener hanging around, so I did not clean up the event listener properly, I don't think. So let us, let's see, remove event listener JavaScript. I'm doing something wrong with the remove, remove event listener. So let's go back and look. Method removes from the event target an event listener previously. So I think you actually need to give it the function so what I need to do is not do that. So that was not correct. 
I'm going to say uh, key down is going to be my function. All right, so I need to basically pull all this stuff out into a key down function. So from here all the way down to here, we want to basically pull that out to a function. And we want to pass that to our event listener here. So add event listener could be key down and remove, a, a, remove event listener. You would probably say key down like this. I think that's how you do it. Let's just try it again. So the oldest. <clears throat> try it again. The oldest. All right. So I think we're good. Let's see if I can get over 100. Nice. So that is basically the gist of how you do a typing game. You could obviously expand upon this and add more paragraphs. You could add. Um, characters per minute if you wanted to which is basically the same calculation here but instead of dividing by number of words you, you divide by the number of characters um yeah that's about it so if you found this tutorial useful be sure to give me a thumbs up and also leave me a comment if you have any suggestions of things i could do better when making these tutorials or if you have an idea of something i should record for you all or something you're interested in learning, just let me know. I'm always I'm always game to like work on something if it's not too difficult. But this was a fun little project. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. So thank you so much. My name is Cody Seibert, and this was another Web Dev Junkie video. So have a good day and happy coding.